Great to see you all here in the NSC. Um, welcome to the Brooklyn Rails 935th New Social Environment. I'm Eleanor, a programs associate here at the Rail, and today I have the pleasure and privilege of being your MC for a conversation featuring Steve Benedetto and Dan Nadell. We are thrilled to welcome poet James Sherry here to close today's program. Before we get started, the Brooklyn Rail acknowledges Black Lives Matter, and here in New York, we are on Lenape Hoking, the unceded land and waters of the Wappinger, Canarsie, uh -huh. Munsee, and Lenny Lenape people of the Delaware Nation and Shinnecock Indian Nation. We recognize land acknowledgments are not a replacement for necessary decolonial work, but serve as a reminder of place. The legacies of dispossession and enslavement that sustain and enrich the stolen land we're speaking from today. And now to introduce today's guest and host. Throughout his career, Steve Di Benedetto's work has reflected his intellectual interests from his early investigations into technology to his most recent fixation on theoretical physics. He earned his BFA from Parsons in 1980 and has been the recipient of numerous awards and taught at many institutions. His work is included in numerous museum collections, including MoMA's. And Dan Nadell is a cura is curator at large at the Lucas Museum of Narrative Art. His biography of Robert Crumb will be published in spring 2025 by Scribner. He's a frequent writer on art and cartooning for books and magazines internationally. Nadell has curated exhibitions for institutions including the Whitney Museum of American Art, and he lives in Brooklyn. Thank you so much, Dan and Steve, for being here today. And I'm really excited to pass it over to you, Dan. Thanks so much. Hello. Thanks for having us. Hi there. Hello, Hello Steve. Hello, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> we meet again. Yes. Um, it's been I wanted to start off by uh, talking a bit about, I mean, we're here, gather, we're gathered here today. Correct. on the occasion of your solo exhibition at the david nolan gallery on view now uh in new, new york's upper east side and the name of the show is also the title of one of my favorite paintings in the show oh, uncertainty gosh. takes a holiday yeah and i wanted to start us off with that painting um yeah. because it combines a few of your interests in one place. You've worked for quite some time um, on different kinds of topographies of, of consciousnesses. Mm -hmm. And you've also spent some time in recent years kind of delving into your love of old monster magazines and producing these these sort of monstrous uh, faces and, and bodies. Yeah. And in this case, we've got an, an eye uh at the center of things and tentacles coming out and the tentacles i know from our discussions are not you know octopi tentacles but rather more like passages into different dimensions so i wondered just by way of kind of talking about your recent project in general if you could uh -huh. lead us through this painting a bit well co co uh, conveniently hello there this painting right behind me where David set me up here, this zone, this white sort of, I don't know if you can see it, <laughs> this yes. kind of exploded um, configuration emerged as a kind of a, um, I don't know, it's a, bit, it's a little loud here, I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> are they, Hang on one are second. They are they coming so, in to take you away? Yeah, so this painting, the, the uncertainty painting, actually is an interesting um, kind of a, a, a confluence, let's say, of some of the lingering, you know, uh, facial or, or humanoid paintings I was doing, these so-called monstrous things. And, um, you know, with this notion I had in my head of trying to construct a, or, or pick depict some kind of model of either a a, a kind of um, multi-dimensional like environment you know based on for what it's worth it, it, for the aforementioned theoretical physics preoccupations I've gotten myself into the idea for example I heard a line on some lecture that 
for certain kinds of theories, string theory, whatever, to work, they, they, their things need to operate at 11 dimensions, so something like that, which, you know, is a convenient kind of uh, situation, just invent new dimensions. So I just thought, oh, well, what would that look like? So the idea of trying to, uh, you know, construct or once again depict these kind of diagrammatic, but also rather um, clunky uh, sort of uh, situations kind of fueled these motifs. Now, yes, it turns out that, I mean, this painting took quite a while and, uh, you know, went through a million permutations like most of these things do. And, you know, I didn't really intend it to have any kind of uh, resonance of the octopus business. It was just like, you know, it turns out it's a depiction of, I, I, once again, like the eyeball thing, which was lingering around. And I, you know, frankly, I would find myself kind of questioning, like Jesus Christ, you know, putting eyeballs and everything is kind of a little cheese ball on some level. But, you know, I would go with it and you get a certain kind of dynamic. And my ultimate kind of discovery, actually, after I came up with the title, Uncertainty Takes a Holiday, which occurred when we were in the car a month or two ago, in the middle of David Nolan making his usual outlandish demands on me, like, where are the titles? Where We need titles. <laughs> Not outlandish, of course, but, you know. So I, I, this phrase popped into my head as a kind of, uh, kind of a usual methodology, I guess, I've used with titles, which is to just sort of, I guess there's a movie called Death Takes a Holiday, and the uncertainty thing kind of came in from the, uh, you know, quantum sort of preoccupations I'm finding myself immersed in, or at least witnessing lectures about, not that I understand the whole thing. And it's interesting because the, the whole basis of a lot of this subatomic physics is about observation, is about like nothing exists until it's observed. Like that's one of the basic kind of quantum, you know, until it's measured. So I was kind of like, oh, this is a rather, uh, this is kind of a reassuring uh, uh, a, a sort of a, a wavelength uh, to be on, <laughs> you know. And, and then, you know, the title also uh, struck me as, or other people as, you know, a bit of a proclamation of uh, uncertainty uh, is out of the picture now, and I know, I know exactly what I'm doing. A little bit of a fib of sorts, but you know, <laughs> yes. nothing nothing wrong with, with trying to make some claim towards, you know, having some authority over what you're up to. Mm -hmm. So I, I like the painting, the title sort of um, emerged with these unexpected, I, in my opinion anyway, rather surprisingly uh, purposeful uh, references. You know, I mean, I, once again, I didn't set out to paint this thing as a depiction or, or um, 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 I don't want to say illustration, but a, but a kind of a realization of some sort of observation of some kind of subatomic phenomenon that creates these many worlds, which is another kind of theme in a lot of this science uh, stuff. So those are always rather reassuring, as it were, uh, moments, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, see it, what it, I mean? Yes. It never seems like you're actually trying to diagram anything, which is nice because uh, otherwise it would sort of dull out a bit. But, well, but um, I like the idea that there are systems, you know, immersed, buried, enmeshed, encoded. I don't know. That's how I, I think of these things. You know, there's some kind of hopefully there's some sense that some kind of information emission is 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 um, at work. Yeah. yeah. Well, that comes across because you are you're presenting things that seem like they should have some correspondence to, if not observable, observable reality, then kind of imagined realities. And yeah. I mean, the, the preoccupation with with physics and and all this sort of stuff, uh, yeah. you know, the, the 11 dimensions. Um, I mean, we've talked about it before and you've said it's it's a kind of jumping off point it's a way i mean and yeah. just the way you've talked about it just now you know hearing snatches of lines in a lecture or uh coming across a stray sentence in a book might lead you into painterly thinking and i wondered about that because uh -huh. it's it's not as though 
you're actually trying to explain. Thank heavens, yeah. you're not trying to explain these concepts, and and you barely understand them. So, um, and I, <laughs> and I yeah. definitely don't understand. Them. I just, <laughs> well, tu- it, I, I just tune out. But uh, it's a lot. But it's like in the '90s, let's say mid '90s or so, when I. Uh, you know, a bit of a tailspin as far as what the hell am I trying to do with the work and everything. Yeah. You know, I, I did some kind of uh, self-reflection and thought, okay, what am I really drawn to these days, you know? And it turns yeah. out, well, if I had to be honest about it, a lot of it was that, you know, a lot of the stuff Terrence McKenna was writing and, uh, right. and a lot of the stuff about around Arthur M. Young, the helicopter, for Bell 47 helicopter and you know, a lot of paranormal, weird, you know, strange underground articles about, you know, odd dimensions or whatever you want to call it. And, you know, at the end of the day, like with the sort of psychedelic stuff, let's say, I remember thinking, well, okay, I don't know what kind of position I might have on this, but what can we say about it? Like if it's a preoccupation, what do you do about it as far as you have this thing of making work, you know, you got this painting activity. Yeah. And, you know, what can I what can I say about that? How can it be integrated? How can it be reflected on or or, or like, I, yeah, like you quoted me or, or, or referenced the jumping off point like, OK. And I also, though, would like to point out, though, that um, I remember thinking a lot in those days. And it's true now, too. Like, you know, I got a little fed up with the kind of abstraction and painterly painting involved with like strategies of can painting, you know, still exist. Right. And thought, you know, I'm sick and tired of the, uh, of the, the, the sort of formal, however good a lot of, you know, great painting has been done over the last 30 something years, maybe. It's like I wanted to put my, as I used to phrase it, like put my chips on something like uh, uh, this might be crazy stuff, but I'm, I want to, I want to embed codes or whatever you want to call it, references to that stuff in the work in the hopes that, yeah. you know, it, maybe it'll trigger some kind of awareness down the road or some kind of, you know, uh, participate in a lineage of information, if, if that's uh, that's one way of phrasing it, let's say. Yeah, I mean, it's a lineage of information that stretches all the way back. I mean, yeah, exactly. and, you know, evoking, evoking invisible realms or invoking psychedelic states or invoking yeah. these sort of scientific discoveries goes, there's a long tradition that you intersect with in painting uh on that yeah, and i and i we were i was saying this the other day i think or i've been saying it too like i you know part of me i sort of like the the kind of almost outlandish let's say um um conflation of having these being preoccupied with some of these let's say currently with some of this scientific stuff and you know cosmology mm-hmm. and basically and 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 at the same time, just doing this, these crude, you know, participating in this rel- relatively crude activity, smearing pigment, <laughs> you know, and I, I feel like that's a very important dimension of this stuff, meaning, uh, like you kind of suggested, it, it connects to some like, you know, ancient man type of behavior. You know? <laughs> yeah, how well I mean, have that? we really come that far in 100,000 uh, years or so? I mean, maybe not. Uh, then, you know? uh, not so much. Um... <laughs> yeah. So I feel, yeah, like 2001, you know, like, new, the yeah. move, uh, you know, when you, you have this kind of, con- you know, this kind of bri- bridging of these kind of science, sci-fi kinds of ideas. And, you know, and, and, I, and once again, I think um, Natalie, who wrote this great press release, I think she does a very good uh, job, in my opinion, of, you know, pointing out that all of this stuff is just kind of, in my mind anyway, kind of all mushed together, all these preoccupations. Yeah. And, you know, but at the same time, the job ultimately is to get a goddamn painting done, you know, to make an actual pictorial functioning object, you know. Yeah, I mean, your preoccupations all mushed together and, and kind of come out in a certain way of thinking about and yeah. making forms uh and kind of a lot of unnameable forms we can call them tentacles or we can call them like machine legs or we can call them whatever yeah but they, they're not actually uh referencing something in the real um and so it, what's always intrigued me about the sort of preoccupations and the mushing together mm-hmm. is how you then 
evolve a painting out of it. And I know sometimes it starts with drawing. And in the case of this particular batch of work, my memory at least is that yeah. this occupation first showed up in the drawing. Kind of, that. yeah, yeah. But the drawing business is, is you know, a separate kind of enterprise, let's say, on its own. I mean, they How relate. so? Well, maybe, um, can we look at a couple drawings? Well, I mean, they relate, uh, but I don't like there this. We are. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best, Dan, to try and, and integrate, <laughs> integrate aspects of the drawings into the paintings. But uh, I always have said, you know, painting, at least up till now, or still, it's a very combative activity for me. Uh -huh. and, like, I, I still have this kind of, uh, in all honesty, maybe a, a kind of lingering abex, ab abstract expressionist kind of methodology where you know you stand up you look at the thing and you you know you confront it you paint you know you stand up and you paint it and i, I don't even know where these things are going of course half the time for right quite a while but uh, these these thematic let's say preoccupations whether it's the old you know mckenna stuff and and and, and you know technology or you know or currently these other notions are really helpful to me as far as okay all right until before the painting, uh, before the painting gets out of hand, you know, before it gets really like what the hell, sure. you know, it's always, I always think, okay, what's the story I'm trying to tell here? You know, what's the story? It's eleven dimensions, right? How are they? <laughs> how are they? You know, it doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. This is another thing I really wanted to um, emphasize is that I've always said, of course, too, that you know, artists, we don't have to be right. You know, artists, you know, engineers have to be right. You know, bridge builders have to be right. You don't want bridge is not you know <laughs> but we don't we have to just be interesting you know artists can we we can we can engage in all kinds of um uh, theoretical or, or propositions and, and and take it from there so i'm i'm feeling like to me it's always i would suggest it's always been more useful I, I, or successful maybe when i feel like i've got some thematic sort of background structure that I'm, uh -huh. I'm preoccupied with yes and, that, and it helps like drive the thing you know at least get it off yeah. the ground. absolutely and then you know at the same time they take on a life of their own too hopefully the painting or the works you know yeah yeah well you start following colorways and in particular in in this batch of work we go back to uh let's see uh, god as if painted by ai Oh, correct. A portrait of God. Portrait of God <laughs> by AI. Exactly. I mean, yeah. what you're doing in a lot of these paintings is yeah. is uh, you are kind of creating a foreground background as though these are structures existing that you're sort of, that you're capturing in some way, not in an objective way, but clearly a kind of almost classical portraiture sense. Yeah. And Sometimes. in this case... Yeah, yes. sort of. Um, yeah. Tell me, tell us about Portrait of God by AI. I mean, uh, obviously, you well, titled it after the fact. Yeah, um, yeah. And and it has, you know, it connects to the other works through these these lines that you're pulling through the painting and and if through the form and through the color and they the lines come in in most of the work uh, in the yeah. show actually these lines that are kind of tying things together but also confusing any identifiable shapes so yeah. uh so uh, why is why why is ai uh making a portrait of, of god well I, that's a good question and does I, I, and I, I, does god exist Dear, well uh, uh, i'm dying to know oh well, I'll, I'll get no to one, that no one will tell <laughs> I'll me get to that. no i mean the funny thing with this all right for what it's worth too this painting actually has has been kicking around for the longest time. I mean, that, that canvas, that surface. And, um, you know, I also always say how I, I barely never destroy any paintings, um, either out of total cheapness or a sense of Catholic, um, you know, conviction that everything is redeemable, you know, no, no matter how miserable the, the actual painting looks. I have, I have tons yeah. of these, you know, small 
campuses yeah. that have been hanging. I mean, everybody does, I assume. I don't know. Anyway, this thing was kicking around for the longest time and just in a completely miserable state. And, you know, boom, one day, I don't know, the color, the luminosity uh, just sort of started to emerge out of it. Um, which, and then I, you know, yeah, sure, it has, it has some of that um, kind of renaissance gold kind of shimmer. Yeah kind of color thing and then all this kind of broken linear stuff and you know once and 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 i just thought oh wouldn't it be kind of amusing to imagine because you know this whole ai thing is in the air you may have heard about it it's, I, I, so, yes somebody yeah. told me yeah. and they're pretending yeah. you know it's like oh my god ai is every is going to put everyone out of business and uh, there's no yes. you know, there's no need for artists anymore and i'm not it's not like i've dwelled on this in, in a ton but i've thought well like the other night I was thinking with uh, talking to someone about, you know, this AI thing is, I don't see it as a threat. At worst, it just means there's going to be a ton more artists out there. Or a ton more, <laughs> a ton more fake more artists. More competition, yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's just going to like expand the population. So yeah. I guess, I guess off the top of my head, I, I, I found myself going, oh, well, you know, what can't AI do, let's say, you know, I mean, I, I'm sure there's a smarter person out there who can tell me that I'm wrong, that AI does know what God is, but it just seemed like um, a funny way to, yeah, or, yeah. you know, to sort of like try and trigger uh, some reference, you know, uh, to the technological condition that we've remarked about now rather, you know, emphatically. Quite a lot. Yeah. Yes. Out there. yeah. And, you know, once again, the idea of, um, you know, like like weaving a, a wedding, this this kind of technological reference or, or spiritual reference to this really rather grungy, you know, greasy painting. I, I always find rather amusing. You know, you're all yeah. You you're <laughs> you yeah. for a long time. You've talked a lot about your paintings being grungy or greasy or ugly or you yeah. know, you you're, you're tough on you're tough on these paintings. Yes. Um, I yeah. mean, are you uh, do you are you turned off by things that are too slick or pretty or is it just this is the aesthetic that you find yourself gravitated to gr gravitating towards making you know I don't, uh, I don't know i'm not anti things looking a certain way you know uh, nice i i don't it just they take on a life of their own well actually i'm sort of lying a little bit because I do think that I think from an early age, this is get. I mean, it's like kind of a Freudian thing, maybe. Um, I think I still have this unresolved sense of um, a problem with authority or something. You know? Yes. Like some unresolved adolescent kind of like punk uh, ish. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, like rebellion thing. And the idea that a painting, you know, is misbehaving in some way or that it is a, uh, yeah, you know, it, it's a kind of a wrong headed result. And, the, and, but, and, but I guess I would also say it's all a matter of just trying to make something that gets noticed as well. You know, right. Like sometimes also, that, that gnarly, yeah. that gnarly kind of item is, is like, you know, startling maybe. Absolutely. Start on. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not the only way. It is not the only way. But yeah, yesterday when we were talking, you said that uh, you were interested in an aesthetic of condensed confusion, oh, which uh, aside from being a, a really yeah. good band name, condensed confusion <laughs> or or confusion and the condensed maybe yeah. might be like as the lead I singer. Don't know. I don't know. Oh, but I, I am basically that is the thing. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I'm, I mean, I am, you know, at the end of the day, too, just basically drawn to most qualities like erosion, corrosion, confusion, paranoia, disruption, you know, most ne any negative kind of anything negative. Well, not exclusively negative. You know, I used to say I, what I titled a, a little show I did with Eller a while ago, Neon uh, Bog. B -O -G. Yes. And, you know, it, that was just a reference to my old I, I remember doing a talk or teaching and some kid asked like, well, what is your idea of color? And I was like, why? Well, how do I answer that? And I, I guess the only thing I thought of was, well, by and large, it's imagine a neon like sign buried in the mud or something, you know, some kind of yeah. 
Which, yeah. looking at these three paintings, I mean, that comes through immediately. Absolutely. Yeah, something yeah. where the, you know, there, there's a bright, you know, it, it, now you're getting me thinking about this other um, phrase that I got quoted saying in the um, press release, this business of um, maximizing a painting. Yes. I wanted to sort of clarify, it's been going through my head that um, I would like to point out that this idea of maximizing a painting, for me anyway, has nothing to do with like amounts of stuff in a painting. It has nothing to do with like amounts. It has to do, like I would argue Robert Ryman and, and Bryce Marden, for example, are completely maximized painters. You know, yes. Bryce, in, in particular though, Bryce's, um, you know, monochromes with all that wax and that, that, that sense of pressure. And it just, what it really means to me is, you've got these elements, however few or however many, and you, you have to figure out how to make them uh, operate with the most efficiency and most accountability. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I think about that. I mean, in my case, you know, it is what it is. Sure. These things go overboard <laughs> sometimes, you know. Well, and you maximize them physically as well. I mean, like you were referring to with Martin, I mean, it's, it's a sort of physical process of maximizing what it, what the support can actually handle in some cases. Well, and, you know, and what the intent much, is. Yeah. yeah. And what's the intent? Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and like with Ryman, you know, I, I've always rejected, I mean, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one, but, you know, the old, when I was a kid, you know, everybody talked about reductivism and, and you know, and it, the Ryman could, in my mind, is nothing, it, it couldn't be less about reduction. It's about building up. He actually right. makes, he puts stuff there. And even of course he doesn't he doesn't go too far, <laughs> but whatever he did is a step. You know, it's it's an yeah. affirmative step. It's not a reductive step, uh, which I think is an important. You know, they're they're physical things. They're physically realized. Yes. Assertive objects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you think they're assertive? Yes. Yeah. Assertive meaning they they assert themselves into our space. Yes. That's what I meant. Yeah. No, no, they do. Yeah. They 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 press against the the world. You know. Yeah. They're much are. stranger objects than totally you ever think until you're actually standing in front of one. Yeah. Which is yeah. which is a great thing. Yeah. No, I and love that stuff. Presence in painting is something we've talked about as well, and you know something you do when in any given studio visit, uh, yeah. you'll have a bunch of paintings around and kind of move them around until we actually let's let's take a look at this painting right here actually yeah you know presence i mean this is this is about as pretty a painting as as you want to make and, and it does indeed look great over a fireplace for any uh, prospective <laughs> yeah. collectors uh out there great over well, a fireplace if you make a it may or may not be available we don't know yet but we don't know we don't know <laughs> who knows but it does look good i agree dan thank you that that's one of my uh, my ventures into something a little bit more um pink fleshy <laughs> yeah. well but also sort of jewel like and yeah. uh a time when you're well first of all explain the title Boson Bar Brawl, which sounded like something from Edgar Rice Burroughs, but it's in <laughs> fact not. Well, that's just a, once again, a very off the top of my head kind of quippy, quippy reference to this, this, this old Higgs boson, you know, particle that Neil deGrasse Tyson described in a uh, lecture video I watched where he says, here's one way to understand, which I, of course, don't totally get this business, but he made it very clear. Imagine you're in a bar and you're sitting and the bar's at one end and the door's over there and all these different people come in and they go to the bar and everything's fine. It's moving very, mm -hmm. very, you know, comfortably and, and smoothly. And then somebody like super famous walks in and sudden Brad Pitt, let's say, or whoever, Taylor Swift. And suddenly there's all this agitation around but they can't see you can't they don't see you don't see this person you just see all this agitation in the field as mm -hmm. well. and mm -hmm. that's that's apparently one way that they 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 detect that these things exist 
but they couldn't find the bloody particle. Oh, yeah, time. yeah, yeah. So yes. it, that interested me. This idea of oh yeah, I get that. Like like they're not witnessing the 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 object. They're right. witnessing the hullabaloo around it. So it's disrupting. So this, this this particle, this this enter, this thing, right. is disrupting the the field around it. Yes. So you know, then I decided to you know try and throw in that little bar brawl idea. <laughs> well, I mean, it, 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 it's an apt metaphor also because the way you have this sort of loping line throughout, uh, yeah. you cordon off these areas of confusion. You know, you're allowing. Yeah. I mean, the nice thing about nice thing, one of the more interesting things about your paintings is that you're never trying to obscure the fact that they're paintings. So <laughs> when that's, you that's when you sort of cordon off a space that yeah. space becomes active in a whole other way you know each loop each yeah. each little yeah. basset is something to deal with um and but i've that, always it, always loved that because it's yeah. it's not just about the line it's not just about exactly. the, the intersecting colors it's this sort of these different areas of focus yeah that that to me that would fit right in what you just said with this um so-called maximizing a painting thing like uh -huh. if it's a bloody painting you know make it a it's a painting you know don't try to uh disguise that in whatever manner one could try and do such a thing i i'm not equipped for that you don't have the chops Just, <laughs> well i don't know you I might think... you might could but you he... uh, what about photorealism what about it how do you like it how do you like the photorealism like well I, I i that's a loaded question of course but um you know, for the longest time, I always used to refer to, um, and still would, to Malcolm Morley as one of my all-time favorite painters yes. by far. And I, but you know, the cool thing about Morley, in my mind, is a. So he started making these hyper-realist, or I don't think he yeah. hated the term photorealism. And then he, uh, you know, at some point, something snaps, and the guy just becomes his work gets so violent, and he starts, you know, really. Um, aggressively um, distorting those paintings. And, and it's almost like he hated them or something, or he wanted to, uh, you know, fuck them up somehow and really be yeah. disruptive of his, his this cl vision of clarity or whatever he was after, or this postcard of a ship, right? Or whatever those things were. And I, that really interests me, that idea of how you can go from one kind of state of mind or attitude yes. to a totally outrageously maybe uh, you know some would say drug fueled kind of you know <laughs> like psychosis or something but he's a very productive guy you know he was yeah yeah but i mean it, it, have you thought i mean looking back over the last let's say 40 years of artwork that you've been making i mean do you uh, see that's not exaggerating too much but... uh, I, sorry <laughs> 15 i forgot you're, there you go. you're just anyway. a pup um <laughs> what's uh, do you see that kind of discontinuity or continuity in in your own work i mean there are... yeah oh totally yeah when when did it happen for or can you give an example of a, a moment of um, a kind uh, of break well semi-gradual but in the beginning like in the um 80s or so late 80s yeah, I was I was sort of involved in these paintings that I think Natalie described, you know, really well in that thing, like about this kind of ero a technological dystopic yeah. paintings that were more graphic, more linear. You know, tape was involved, and yes. there was a kind of uh, some would say it had op op artish qualities, which I did uh -huh. not anyway uh, endorse. You know, that reading to me they were more like interference patterns mm -hmm. in, some, in some form or another. And then, you know, those those lines started to decay or they started to kind of um, bleed, you know, like they, they, they became more textural and more about a kind of um, kind of eroded state of information uh -huh. uh, um, dissemination. And then those led to these more like toxic spill paintings. I mean, if I don't, am I supposed sure. to run down my output? I guess that's one way. Yes, and run then, it down. Yeah, and they, though, well, and none of these, and there was a lot of spray paint. I didn't use like oil paint or anything like that. But yeah. A lot of it was like industrial type paint. And uh, somewhere along the line, these things led to, during the time when I was actually showing with um, one uh, Tony Shafrazi, who oh, yeah. 
was a very intense, interesting, and rather meddlesome fellow. And, you know, uh, kind of insisted that you have to paint this way. Yeah, yeah. So I tried out being more um, image oriented. There was, there was a kind of imagistic element right. to enter into the work. And uh, yeah, so one thing, you know, I don't know, one thing led to another. And, and you know, people, I think it is somewhat true that I had a, I mean, reputation makes it sound like it was bigger than it was, but a, but a, but a, a, a sense of like people like that guy, uh, he changes too quickly, like his stuff isn't huh. consistent huh. enough or something like that. Yeah. Which doesn't seem like it's such a, you know, now I just don't care, of course. Okay. Right, right. You're just. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've surrendered to this. Metal. You're in, you're in Helgoland. What is Helgoland? Oh, Helgoland, right. Well, that's a reference to this island in um, Germany, right? The North Sea, where um, I just listened to a lecture about this. There's a book by this great guy, Carlo Rovelli, called Helgoland. It's where uh, Heisenberg, Werner Heisenberg, the uncertainty uh -huh. principle guy, and kind yes. of major quantum theory. He went to this island basically completely alone and just to, to figure out what the hell he was stumbling into with this kind of quantum theory uh you know equations that he was i guess you know conjuring up and was completely baffled by them and was traumatized hmm. so he goes huh. to this island this apparently it's just like there's one tree on this entire island and he had like a horrible kind of um asthma or something like that uh some problem breathing yeah. so he went there freezing cold and uh so you know i just figured well there you go you know <laughs> that's there you go i had to call it something <laughs> yes. to call it yes. but you know to me this painting has you know it's it's fueled by back here it's fueled by um you know once again these these ideas about you know cosmological configurations and and varied states in my mind mm -hmm. anyway varied states of maybe the um evolution of of the universe you know I mean, why not just say it? Yeah, why not? <laughs> just lean We're in. Thinking, I'm thinking big. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the other thing is, and you didn't bring this up, or maybe you did, but people have traipsed through the studio over the last, like, year or so or less, and, there's, and they're seeing all this, like, f physiological kind of evidence. Sure. Which, um, once again, obviously in this one, that red business looks, you know, pretty organic in some yeah. mutant, mutant way. Yes. Which, of course, I, I mean, I don't set out thinking, oh, I have to put references to the body in there. But I, I'm super happy when that, uh, I mean, obviously, eyeballs have a, a body reference. Yes. So this idea that, once again, that the human element is somehow mixed up and, and uh, integrated into all of this other kind of data. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, also that it doesn't stand on its own. I mean, if you're talking about all these particles and dimensions, the human element is yeah. is uh, inseparable from those things. It's it's made. I mean, up I fully it. expect people to hear a lot of this and be like, you know, you know, what is he crazy or something? Like these are just these you know weird mushy paintings with funny shapes and stuff. But which is fine, you know. And, well, and but that's, yeah, that that's fine. I mean, is it yeah. fine? I don't know. It's it's okay. Well, who are we to say what's fine? Precisely. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, no, but I think what's interesting about Helgoland is also that it it represents. Uh, I, I mean, I've seen, I saw this painting over a bunch of years as it kind of came Two. together, and what you have wound up with is a a kind of almost like a group portrait, because you are putting yeah. down this this clear background, you know. There's obviously mm -hmm. a, a background involved, a space involved, I should say, not a background, but some kind of a space. Yeah. And these diagrams, they're not creatures, but these these forms coming forward, presenting themselves yeah. to us. And I mean, is it is did you eventually settle on an idea of it being a kind of rogues gallery of of ideas and forms, or or did well, that just this you know, actually that well, you know, this painting, once again, like, uh, it was actually the first larger scale thing I did in a long time. 
to be, I hadn't really had a studio uh, 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 to work on something that big for a couple of year, a year or so. Yeah. And, um, and it, yeah, it was, it, it, the intent for me has been, I mean, on a formal level to try and make paintings about more or less one hunk of something, you know, a singular sort of gestalt. I mean, it's happening in the smaller ones mostly and drawings. Uh -huh. But yes. this thing, this this painting was a very, uh, you know, a difficult um, birth, as it were. You know, yes. it, it was a lot. Of, and then I, at some point, I just had to accept that it was going to be these episodic, I guess I would say, uh, you know, configurations mm -hmm. that it, it, it just was going to have to live with these um, separate, you know, situations. separate zones. Yeah, sort of. Yeah. And it, you know, it's got a lot of, uh, you know, funky, extremely varied textures. Like some of this stuff is extremely uh, thin and luminous, and some of it's really built up quite a bit. And, uh, you know, I, I just think, I mean, let's face it. I mean, at the end of the day, you want to try and make something exciting. <laughs> you know, I mean, yes. I mean, this was my idea of like, okay, let's just like kind of go for it. You know, let's make yeah. this a little bit outlandish and, you know, go all the way. Yeah, that's yeah, it's funny. I mean, uh, your concern, I mean, we, we started out talking a little bit about that you were sort of frustrated with strategies and uh, painting as strategy or uh, deploying strategies. And it seems Ooh, like yeah. where we where you and I often wind up, at least when we're talking in the studio is the sort of is paintings that are that almost have a life of their own, kind of like what you were saying about Ryman, that sort of present themselves and I stand up and say hello. Um, yeah. And and that that's also not an easy thing to get to because you don't necessarily have a set criteria. You're not sealing up an image. You're not kind of finishing a procedure. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. Is, is that part of the reason why you have so why they sort of hang around for a while and you you kind of act like a an, the archaeologist of your own terrain yeah well that's a good way of putting it um yeah i have it in my head that or i've convinced myself i guess that i really like this business of getting like caught up in the weeds with these things you know yeah and 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 they have all these different stages they go through and I, you know, I like this procedure of having to crawl out of it or, mm -hmm. like I said earlier, kind of wrestle it to the ground, you know, and yeah. be, be, you know, it's like alligator wrestling or something. Uh, <laughs> they need to be subdued and, and, and sculpted almost, you know. Yeah. I would, I would almost argue. Um, but that's and my that's, lot in life. Yeah, that's your lot. Yes, that's your lot in life. Okay. Um, and that's quite a different process than the drawings, which seem like a more meditative, almost, I mean, I wouldn't say relaxed, but more at ease process for you, maybe. Somewhat. I mean, is it, is, like, like materially, does one, does oil lead you somewhere other than graphite? Are you, are you do you find yourself <sighs> I guess. making different kinds of marks with one than the other? Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's. It, I mean, for what it's worth, too. Like the the the, the idea of a, a pencil line, for example. There's only so many things you know you can. It's, it can't go that awry, you know, right off the bat. <laughs> right. I mean, in some cases it can. But with, when you put like, with, for me anyway, you have this like wet brush thing. It's like all these other things start happening. The minute yeah. you start, you know, making lines. But, you know, I am getting better, to be honest with you. I think I'm getting better like that that Boson uh, painting, the wiggly line yeah. one. I mean, one thing I want to point out is that what's kind of important for me in the uh, production of these things is, uh, and it happens in the drawings really easily, is is a kind of pressure I think of, like, like the way the space around a line has to create yeah. pressure against it. Uh, mm -hmm. That's very important, you know, at least to me that so in other words, it's not really like the line is just imposed over some surface, the surface. No, of, it's not a calligraphic line. It's, it's, it's yeah. something that's actually physically affecting the space around it yeah. and vice versa. 
Yeah. I mean, that, that's what that's what makes those things so lively in a way is that there's always this sort of prison between uh, the the space and, and the line. I mean, it, it yeah. sort of has energy to it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's definitely a, a preoccupation that I, 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 I for some reason, pressure <laughs> seems to be a, a, a word that I'm, 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 I'm preoccupied with um, the idea of stuff material in a painting or something pressing up against the edge or yeah well, i was gonna say you, you you do tend to if we look can we look at uh, a couple other paintings let's see oh that's a good one um hmm. you do tend to kind of center the sub the sort of visual i don't want to call it subject matter but the thing that you're sort of depicting <laughs> the unnameable thing that you're depicting yeah. in this case dimensional daycare uh exactly and and they tend to sort of just stop short of the edge or yeah. rub rub right up against it which is that mm -hmm. sort of pressure of the rectangle and so yeah. i wonder about that with you i mean i guess rhyme is another one who's sort of there's it's all there's so much relationship between the edge of the edge of the paint and the edge of the canvas um yeah but is that I think what that, is it about pressure? Well, it's not in some cases it's a it's a, a pressurey scenario, but the extent to which I generally am centralizing these situations, yeah. I think is to is to create in my mind anyway, a sense of like the material is being like presented, you know, it's being it's like on display, right, as opposed to a, a kind of an open ended field. Yes. So in, in my mind, it's, a, I don't know, just an approach that makes it somewhat less pictorial. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I guess I also, I mean, one reference for what it's worth, too, I, I remember fixating on years ago was if you look at certain European uh, painting, like between World War One and Two, you know, that Cobra, a lot of the Cobra uh, voles, yeah. you know, and, and all these kind of weird easel scaled um abstractions that yes these, these very odd things uh, george Mathieu, you know, mm -hmm. right, if that's how you say his name and they always had these these things were like events happening in the middle of the paint in the middle yeah, yeah. well there's everything also, was just uh, like cramped you know shoved right in the middle as yeah. opposed to i guess by and large in uh, new york painting everything was enormous and and sort of to the edge and over the edge and these immersive, you know, fields. Yeah, yeah. Which I guess I thought, okay, I don't want to do that. Like it seemed more, <laughs> more subversive, in a sense, to fixate on this more European, like Pol uh, Picabia, you know, obviously. Picabia or Fautrier. Yeah. Is another one where it's yeah. just yeah, this this event happening, and the rest of the painting is sort of uh, understanding it through the rip rippling out, but the main event there and heavily worked i think it reinforce i don't know i think it reinforces the reading of the thing as like a kind of information mm -hmm. uh submission something uh -huh. like, like something just kind of presented once again like as a yeah presented. and this higgs hippie hellhole what, what do we wow uh, what do we make of this title well i once again just looking for some kind of kind of um Hingy reference to uh, the idea that, at least in my mind, uh, once again, these are like tubular, you know, multi-dimensional avenues or, or, or wormholes or something like that. Um, some people have seen other references in them that aren't exactly up my alley, but you know, you can't really, you can't really uh, force people to see what you want them to see. You know, you have to. Not yet. <laughs> no, you can't. No. But this one is also really like it's a very physically painted thing. You know, to me, there's a, a, yes. a lot of really good pressure in, in this one. Uh, what's also I mean, I'm always a little startled when I watch some of these um, <coughs> sorry, physics uh, lecture things and they have a blackboard or they'll illustrate some of these cosmological and, and it's really kind of weird how some of their motifs are things I've drawn out already, like these right. odd, tubular, um, you know, curved space kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I'm not saying I, you know, I'm, 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 I'm somehow on that level, but maybe, I don't know. You might be. I may have pre, pre, pre yeah. Oh, <laughs> Dave, thank you. You, you've imagined physics before. Yes, of course. Yeah. Oh yes. Um, and That's then a- there's these sort of bio, for lack of a better term, like biomorphic machines that you were preoccupied with for some time as well. Yeah. Like a robot yeah like you know to my mind this is a kind of a painting that might be seen as some uncovered like like ancient sort of design or 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 what what's the word um schemata you know scheme for some kind of device uh that you know never got made or got forgotten about right but once again the, the painting itself just was created over all these attempts of what the hell is this thing you know yeah yeah, what am i trying to do here what's the story you're trying to tell and you know in many ways that to me that would be an ideal reading of any uh, any of the work is sure what the hell is that you know that's all i really want is somebody to go (laughs) what am not not like what is it in terms of what's he trying to depict but like what the hell am i in front of you know right 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 well at the same time it's just a dumb painting you know it's just a, a regular old painting Right, right. But that's that's sort of the joy of it. Uh, yeah. Is yeah. that it's something that makes you come up short, but that you do recognize is is just as you would say, just a painting. Because you don't make claims for these as talismanic, or you don't really make claims of where you made them. There's not the sort of mystification around them. There, there are these, uh, you know. Yeah. Well, I things, like that things in the world. I mean, it, once again, it comes down to, um, OK, you've got this thing called painting, you know, OK. And, and if we're going to just stick to the rules or the conditions of mm-hmm. a surface and some pigment and whatever else you got, you know, how do you how do you maximize that? How do you right. take those? You know, it's the same thing with playing uh, music, for example. Mm hmm. Like, I love the idea of the conventionality of the drums, let's say. Like, just yes. that, it's just, there's that. And then how do you, what can you do with that limited, yeah. uh, so to speak, um, apparatus? And I feel pretty committed, you know, maybe arguably in a conservative-ish sort of way, aesthetically, that, yes, I don't want to be bothered with, like, you know, like where uh, someone like say Stella, <laughs> Frank Stella went into all these outrageous, you know, material kind, which I love, you know, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a huge fan, you know, the, there's a great show of the Indian birds around here, not far from the gallery. Oh, really? Fantastic. Oh, yeah. Absolutely fantastic. But yeah, yeah, that's right. But you, your, your main arena is canvas, is oil on canvas. That's yeah. it. You're yeah. not interested in trying to find the strange or the uh, chaotic or the maximalist with other kinds of technologies or supports or. No. Yeah. 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 Or de- deploying uh, once again, like, you know, thinking. Um, well, you know, I also grew up with, uh, in a sense, with the business in the 70s or whatever of. You know, oh, you have it's art. Art has to go beyond. You know, it has to. Oh, the great art, the great progressive art was going, you know, further. Whatever that yes. is. You know. Yeah. And, you know further. Art, yes. Yeah. Yeah. This idea of like pushing boundaries and this whole idea of, and I remember thinking, I don't know. I just want to stick. I, I. I mean, I get. I love radical art. I. You know, Chris Burden, whatever. I don't. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I love lots of stuff that has nothing to do with painting. I, I mean, it's it's our job to know about everything, to be honest, you know, yes. in some form or another. So the idea of saying, like, like I would almost say years and years ago, it was like about collapsing, like the, I used to think of it as like the, uh, the radicality of being of the middle, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like the radicality yeah. of being a, 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 like Cezanne to me is that way, you know. Yes. It's like yes, super, yes, yes. it's like, what's the big deal? He painted a bunch of apples sitting on a, on a table. Right. But, but it's the obvious, house. Yes. Because the, the subject of that work to is like all that, all that negotiating yes. going on. Yes. As you all know. So yes. that idea of just like 
learning or digging the energy of, of audacity, let's say, yes. in a lot of art making, but also trying to somehow compress that or bring that into the, the, the regular old, you know, the kind of knucklehead realm of painting. The knucklehead realm of painting. That would be... <laughs> in the most great, sort of, you know... Title I'll, for a group show, actually. The knucklehead. Yeah, that's all yours, Dan. You can... Thanks, buddy. It's all yours. Um, yeah. Now that you... So the show is up... Uh, uncertainty has has briefly taken a holiday and um are you able to paint while you have a show up many artists can't make art while they have a show up which is always yeah. kind of puzzled puzzled me i don't know why it puzzles me but there you no go. It's, it, it's funny you say that because i have been finding myself um a after david nolan here took all this work like a while ago from yeah. I think to make sure I didn't screw it up or anything like that. Right. I didn't, I didn't alter anything after they were photographed, which wise, very wise maybe man. once yes. that happened. I don't know. He always makes a big deal out of it. But um, so I'm sitting around going, oh, what do I do? I have all this. You know, I'm working, though. It's, it's funny you say that because I have been thinking about like being productive like oh yeah let's keep going you know i've got all these i got these other big ass paintings i'm working on and yeah. i don't have any reason to work on i mean they don't have a particular place to go as far as i know um, yeah. however i am happy i did some small head paintings because i think i told you i'm i'm going to be in this uh, show in a couple of weeks but you're not supposed to talk about that <laughs> anyway i'm getting off stage uh, hints here anyway well, so it's Yes, it's good you're, that you're I continuing have continuing to work. Yes. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's been a, a, a slightly different dynamic, but really not, yeah. not that unusual. Yeah. That's good. And all right. Well, I think we're, we're probably, this is a, a perfect, oh, oh. whoops. Will you go oh. back one more? Sorry. Uh, this is such a perfect image of the oh. installation. And I must say for, for the viewers at home, as they say, um the installation of steve's show is really quite beautiful oh, um you. and i highly recommend you get to the upper east side to david nolan gallery uh to see the installation because they uh as, as someone said when we were at the opening uh the uh molding always makes paintings look better it's just <laughs> It's nice, yes, but, it's uh, nice. but it's good Not to, to see a fireplace and a fireplace. Uh, yeah. But no, it, it is really good to see these in space and up close because there's a tremendous amount going on. And it's a sort of generous way to see them in, in this particular space. So uh, get up there and deal with these deal with these things. And I think it's probably time to take questions. It is. Oh, uh, are there, the are there questions? Preordained 2 p.m. hour. Right. Wow, that zipped right by, Dan. Well, you know, you uh, you entertain yourself, so wow. it's it's good. You help. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, are there? Oh, look at all these humans. Are there? Oh, the wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wonderful. That was that was fantastic. Thank you so much, Steve and Dan. Oh, that thanks. It's a great conversation. Thank you. Um, we do have some questions today from the audience, and the first question today I will be asking on behalf of GE. GE wrote, because it seems you trust yourself to discern the painting's dialogue of figure and ground by going out on the limb of instinct and chance, are you more a painter of process rather than a conjurer of meaning? Thank you. Hmm. Well, I mean, I don't know if you have to pick one or the other. I mean, definitely process is probably, you know, an operative, the operative methodology of how these things get get realized. Um, I mean, I, I am, I do feel like I hope the there there also some kind of meaning involved. You know that there is some. Uh, you know, by, by trying to integrate some of this, um, some of these other notions, whether they're scientific or psychedelic or counterculture or cultural at large. Uh, yeah, I, I think that hopefully those two things are interwoven uh, in my mind, if that makes, uh, if that answers it. Yeah, 
I think so. Thank you. Sure. Um, our next question is from James. James, you should be able to unmute. Yes, I am unmuted. <laughs> oh, hi there. <laughs> hi. Um, I, I was seeing all of these uh, cartoony things, and when I was selecting the poem that I was going to read after this, I did select uh, a poem about cartoons or drawn from cartoons. Then you were mentioning all these Europeans that you were interested in. I was wondering about Du Buffet. Well, you know, um, I mean, he's a remarkable uh, character for sure. I mean, and I, I actually don't think about Du Buffet a whole lot, to be honest with you. He doesn't like fixate. I don't, I don't think, but I have been. Uh, there have been times when people have referenced him in this work, and it's it's always like totally satisfying. You know, I'm always like, oh, fantastic. You know, it's always. I mean, I always love. Maybe you have this too with with your work where. You think you're following a certain kind of uh, wavelength path, and you suddenly get people saying, oh, but that really reminds me of this other character's output that you were like, oh, fantastic. I, I, I love their output, but I never really think yeah, so. I, I, I barely think that I'm in control of my own work, but just <laughs> right. kind of hanging on while it happens. Sure, sure. No, but Dubuffet is great. I mean, there's no getting around it. Appreciate that. Thanks, James. Um, and thanks, Steve, for that answer. Our next question is from Kaladzi. Uh, sorry if I didn't pronounce that correctly, but you should be able to unmute and ask your question. Hey, Steve, how are you doing? Hey there. That's my question. Um, no, the uh, um, uh, coming from the studio to your current to the current space, are, are you seeing anything new in the work that you didn't see uh, in the studio? Usually, when things go up in a new place, uh, uh, di a different uh, thing of all uh, uh, emerges. You mean seeing the the work in, like, say, a gallery? Yeah, so yeah. Are you, are you noticing things about the work that you didn't see when it was in the uh, the studio? Well, uh, that has been known to happen. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you I'm, go? I'm, oh, hoping, I'm hoping there's a moment. What was I thinking? Uh, how did I miss that? On the other hand, this, for some weird reason, maybe it's the great gallery, I don't know. I, I, I'm actually quite, I'm not, I'm not spooked by any uh, overt issues uh, with these things, you know, that I would like, oh geez, I wish I could reconsider that. Um, is that not, is that what you mean though, or? Well, maybe more positive, uh, what, what, uh, seems to be some, some, uh, some new paths that's, that, uh, are, are percolating in your head after having it up there. Oh, you mean like things to follow up on? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Um, uh, I do get, it does trigger some other ways of like how to proceed with, with new work. And, and things that are in progress uh, in the studio. Sure. I mean, I haven't, you know, I can't cite anything in specific, specifically at this point in, the to in time. But it's, a, you know, it's, let's face it, it's a, it's a privilege to get work out there. And it's, it's a privilege to be able to reflect and, and get a different perspective. It seems, seems like there's a lot more uh, shifting screens in the work, uh, you know, with at least the one right behind you. Seems seems like there's many many uh, layers shifting rather than a, a juxtaposed architecture. True. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, no, that's a good point. I think that's true. Thanks. Thank you for that question. Um, thanks again, Steve, for your generous answer. Um, our final question today before our poetry reading from James is going to be from Thong. So Thong, you should be able to unmute. Oh, Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Hello there. Hello there. Uh, yeah, I, I was in and out. Sorry, I wasn't tuning entirely the whole time, but I will super soon this weekend for sure. It's been a while, so it's great to see yeah, no, up now at uh, at David Nolan. I'm gonna go this Saturday. Sorry, I missed the opening. Yeah, it, but um, my question, you know, it's been a while since I really spent some time thinking about because it was was it in 2005 that great show, The Whitney, that you were in the remote. Yeah, movie. remember? Oh, yeah. 
Oh yeah. yeah. That was okay. a great show. That was the show yeah. that I remember seeing your work in context with Julie Noretto, with uh, Frank Ackerman, with Terry Winters. Yeah, and, Carol Dunham. Carol Dunham and Alex Ross. And yeah, it was fantastic. It was a great show, you know? Yeah. And I yeah. always wanted to ask this question, you know, that I always felt there's aspects, I think, of alchemical channeling of a vision. And I, it's so uh, quite akin in spirit and form that I can think of Will and Blake, you know? Yeah. I always want to ask you that source, that unbridled romanticism, Steve, if you might even call it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Will and Blake, and there's a sense of Richard Pusset dot meditated and spiritual side, which put him a very interesting in the context of the rest of older members of the New York school. Right. Right. And I was wondering mm -hmm. the that 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 kind of vision that elicits the kind of spiritual and meditative side of you and 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 the painterly quality of of early Richard Pusset not remind me so much of how you you kind of handle the surface of your own, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good uh, uh, comparison, a good observation. I mean, he's also one of these painters I've never literally fixated on much, but every once in a while, I could, there was a fantastic show a few months ago, or more maybe. Uh, it pays? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, with all of these, these really complicated uh, woven sort of structures, you know, yeah. decaying, being built up. Yeah getting you know i mean i i like to use the word harassment a lot with painting you know? it's, <laughs> yeah. a, it's, it's, it's a mutual harassment that goes yeah. on you know it, <laughs> but no man you're right though the the you know this this kind of spiritual dimension this idea of of trying to bring something into the picture that, that once again might help stimulate or trigger or help these things go beyond just becoming a, a kind of strategy about painting or a kind of, uh, you know, just an, a formal, let's say, exercise, however innovative, you know, one might be with that. I, I do definitely like the idea that they should and, and, and have to be informed by some, uh, I don't know, some kind of body of ideas or some body of thought or some... Mm -hmm. uh, visionary, you know, kind of um, compulsion. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of times it's, it's once again, it's just like execute, like that other fellow's question about um, process. Uh, a lot of it is just going about this business. And then I, I know where I want it. I know what I want to see out of the thing, but I, 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 I it's only when it emerges that it's evident. You know, it's not always like put in in the first place, but I, I, I definitely think those are that's clearly an important kind of quality and it's risky. You know, these this kind of content in a sense, even though it seems a little bit more ubiquitous these days, like people are not afraid to play like Carla Knight. I, I have to see her show. She's involved in a lot of these kind of, you know, weird kind of uh, UFO languagey painting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm very curious to see what what that's what's going on there, with her work. Yeah, but the the revisioning process is so essential to how you mediate with the images. They never were seem to me graphic. You know, correct. They're, they're, that's they're true. Very deeply embedded in the metaphorical process, as much as finding the right kind of location for the image to exist. Yeah, so vision is uh, is essential. Yeah, and I, I mean, like I said before, this, this to me that also I, I guess with this maximizing of painting idea, this idea of just getting in there and uh, you know it's a messy process. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't mean messy in terms of like you know there's paint everywhere. <laughs> I mean, the, it's like uh, conceptually messy in a way, or the process is messy. The engagement with painting to me is it's about this entanglement in a sense you know so yes it, it, it's true that even in the drawings you know in terms of graphicness like you were maybe you were in terms of carla knight's work or other people this idea of a much more explicit mm. uh depiction of something 
I mean, I vacillate a lot between, I think, you know, um, I know in my uh, in my own activity, how literal should something, you know, like, okay, I I need to make this really literal and just see exactly what the hell I'm talking about here. And and so there's always that building up or depicting something in a more explicit manner Mm -hmm. and and Mm -hmm. then going like, oh, no, that's, you know it's got to get fucked up somehow or it's got to get <laughs> eroded or it's got to get you know to me all of those stages if they're impactful enough are all useful you know what about uh, the disappearance of the helicopter steve um, what happened um, to them <laughs> they flew away <laughs> they flew away i don't I know yeah those helicopter paintings you like those yeah oh yeah bell 47 well they may come back you never know okay. you stay tuned all right (laughs) we'll see we'll just have to do this again well thank you steve thank you dan back thank you thank you you so much thank you so much fong um that was again such a great conversation thanks dan and steve um and thanks for your questions we have a tradition here at the rail of concluding our events with a poetry reading. And today I'm so thrilled to welcome our poet laureate of the day, James Sherry to the stage. James Sherry is the author of 14 books of poetry and prose, most recently Selfie, Poetry, Social Change and Ecological Connection and the poetry book Entangled Bank. Since 1976, he has edited Roof Books and Roof Magazine publishing over publishing nearly 200 titles. He started the Segway Foundation, Inc. in 1977, producing over 10,000 events of poetry and other arts in New York City. Thank you so much for being here, James. Thanks, Eleanor. Um, And and thank you, uh, Dan and Steve, for that great conversation. Um, I, I looked at the work before I chose the poem that I was going to read and um, and then it turns out that Dan has been uh, writing about our crumb. So these are uh, a set of frames from the Sunday comics. No images, but just the, some lines that I uh, picked out. And there are different sections. I guess I'll, I'll read about five minutes of it, which is, I think, my allotted time. And, uh, and I wanted to thank um, Steve and Dan for, for their conversation. So this is called metaphor being frames from the Sunday comics without images. Oh, and and one other thing, those 11 uh, dimensions from string theory does is no more than an explanation of this totally normal life that you see around you. It's not there's something uh, unusual about the result. So this <laughs> is number one, join the fun. Exactly. You may, you may win a nice prize, Now look what you've done. It's too hard to explain, Elmo. I need every book you've got on empty nest syndrome. You said you knew what it meant and you don't, but is this how I really look? (coughs) Wow, Slick, that's really slick. There must be a way to stop your arms from flapping around like that. Section two, I earn every bite. So what does that tell you? That laughing exercises all 32 muscles in your face? The final innings against your team's biggest rival? Mr. Trump has so much to teach us, doesn't he, Dad? Rat, it's probably that round-headed poet. Uh, Bruck, Derek, come on, guys, you're supposed to be checking for drugs and weapons. I just caught Mr. Bumstead red-handed. If it's called daylight savings time, will you save some time for me? Why are we asking him for directions? Three. But if you can't file with the principal, Luann, who can you file with? I want to get pretty before I go back in the hospital. And and I want to say, I thought that these would be like upbeat, you know, delightful little poems about comics. And it turns out they're they're kind of mean-spirited and negative. (laughs) I want to get pretty before I go back in the hospital. And just exactly who is we, you little rat? Are you sure $1,000 is enough? Dog proof? I think not. What makes you think mud is healthy? I call them her buns of steel. From the leftovers of their meals, Maeve has been saving scraps of lard 
enough to hold a key's impression. Landscape is the greenhouse of the soul because he's calling from across the street. I, however, play the course less taken. You missed the big battle, Lucky Eddie. Where were you? Not mine. You'll make my tan, fake tan all streaky. Tonight's top story is my contract has been renewed. Coach didn't want me to tell you, but the bus is about to leave. Mr. Eyepatch's shrink guru and surrogate daddy. Wouldn't it be great if we could get him to talk? Okay, boys, then you can cook your own supper. This isn't the beginning. This is the ending. They enjoy a lot of the same foods as us. Let's form some protein symphony, reactionary teens who caught, who continued to sin throughout the night. The worm took me to an early bird. Cheer up, Fuzz. I'm sure Snoopy couldn't do it the first time either. <laughs> Four, invasion of the belly snatchers. I'm on the couch. I'm fluffing up the pillow. I shouldn't have to scream about it more than once. There wasn't any water in the pool. Hey, you know any Hootie and the Blowfish? With my honor intact, I start my day. Did you really believe Harrison would say, yes, Luann, I showed you that porno video on purpose to watch your shocked face that made me laugh to see you squirm? Oh, and by the way, I'm the one who made that obscene phone call to you and put the naked doll on your desk. I wanted to observe them unnoticed. Five, Howard Stern free zone. <laughs> oh no, not the silent treatment. I'm walking my pet ant. Do the hex and I'll give you a raise. Horrific. We award the plaintiff 20 million and the jury 2 million. Find six differences between these two panels. He forgot to look both ways before crossing. Bell a set, in bat, tag skin, sell a lob. It's enough to make a man sick. They put up this sign to keep the tourists away. An unidentified fried object. According to your crystal ball, your life will change. The stone of destiny, the ancestral crock of Caledonia shall this day be ours. Regular Sunday group. Here is a, your list of fake acronyms for the staff meeting. You're six. You can talk and read and sing. You can swim and count and ride a bike. So compared to a brand new baby, you're special. <clears throat> Golfers enjoy the game more when they feel guilty. I must say, the real satisfaction in cartooning comes from sharing one's work with others. Sorry, mate, I don't know exactly. Most of the time, I just ignore it. So maybe that's a good stopping point. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys, for excellent. excellent. It's great, thank you. Bravo. Wonderful, thank you so, so much, James. Um, and thank you again to Stephen Dam. Um, and thanks also to Valentina, Antoine, David, and the rest of the team at David Nolan Gallery for supporting us in our preparations for today's event. We'd also like to thank the Terra Foundation for American Art for sponsoring our NSE program and making these daily conversations possible and for their support of our growing archive, which you can view on the Rails YouTube channel and where this conversation will be posted shortly. For the last 23 years, the Rail has been a platform for the arts, culture, and politics through our free monthly publication and public events like our daily NSC. Check the chat for a link to support all the work we do here at the Rail. And join us tomorrow for what's going to be an incredible conversation at 1 p.m. Eastern with Deborah Roberts, Zoraida Lopez Diago, and Shahrazad Tillett on the event of What About Us at Stephen Friedemann Gallery. We will be concluding with a reading by Eza Ahmed tomorrow. And thanks to all of you for tuning in to the NSC today. It's always a pleasure. Um, and you can now turn on your microphones and say hello and goodbye as you leave. Thank you so, so much for being here and hope to see you soon. Thanks. Thank you. Good job, Steve. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Bye. 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 Thanks. Great reading, James. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank Thanks, oh, thank you. Sir. It's great. Congratulations. Bye. Thank you, James, for the reading. And go see the show, you guys. <laughs>